back to One Hit Wonderland, where we take a look at bands and artists known for only one song. Now, I don't usually do timely episodes, but um, sometimes something so stupid happens that I have to cover it. Briefing reporters just before we came on the air saying they are now tracking a suspected Chinese spy balloon hovering over the northern U.S. If you are watching this in the future, uh, in the early months of 2023, the American media went nuts over a, quote, Chinese spy balloon. It is not clear what they were spying on or what secrets they could steal from 100,000 feet up with their wayward, unsteerable balloon wafting gently over the Midwest, but it was a big thing that happened. There was talk that President Biden is weak or that the Chinese had learned so much classified shit all because the Chinese lost a fucking kite with a GoPro attached to it. I have to explain all that because by the time this video is a week old, no one will have remembered this non-event even happened. Or it'll cause World War III, who knows. My point is that this year, there was an international incident caused by a balloon. An idea that before now was only found in the realm of fanciful pop songs. Also at first sight for me. The year is 1983, the height of Cold War paranoia. And in the city of West Berlin in West Germany, one little band writes a song about total nuclear annihilation. That band is Nana, so named after its lead singer, Nana. And their little song becomes a global smash in a world that seems like it could end at any moment. Ach du liebe! Now as befits a song from a country torn in two, there are two versions of this song, both extremely successful. In its original German, this song is called 99 Luftballons. You might know it better by its English version, 99 Red Balloons. 99 red balloons floating in, the summer sky. in England, the English version went to number one. In America, the German version went to number two. And both versions would be chart-topping smashes in several other countries. As far as one-hit wonders go, it'd be hard to find a more beloved song out there. This is just an absolute timeless bop that just happens to be about seeing entire cities flattened by missiles. It's a song with a shocking amount of longevity considering how of the times it was. There is probably no song on earth more 1983 than this. Not only because it was so very plugged into the zeitgeist of that time, but also because 1983 was a really good year for music and this is one of the best examples of it. But the American pop charts are not kind to foreign languages, or at least they weren't at the time. Nana never saw an American hit again and disappeared back into the dark recesses of Europe. Or at least as far as we knew they did. What happened to them after their career deflated? Let's find out. And for God's sakes, let's hope the world doesn't blow up before we get to the end of this episode. Hast du etwas Zeit für mich? Ha! Und jetzt die Gruppe Stripes mit Ecstasy. Before we start here, I should say that there is going to be a lot of German in this episode, and I am not super confident in my ability to say it right. Which is embarrassing because I did take three years of Deutsch in high school, but I wasn't really a great student, so let's say my German skills no es muy bueno. I'll do my best, but uh, no promises. Ecstasy. This is Gabriella Kerner, better known by her nickname Nena from Hagen, Germany. As a very young woman in the late 70s, she was in a band called The Stripes. They released an album in 1980 that didn't really go anywhere and they broke up. But Nana decided she wanted to keep going with music, so she and the drummer Rolf Brendel moved to Berlin to start a new band. And this is going to be important, so here's a quick refresher on Berlin. During World War II, the Free World and the Godless Commies teamed up to defeat Nazi Germany and afterwards they basically ripped the country in half and took one side each for themselves. But that would have left the capital city Berlin behind the Iron Curtain and the West didn't want that to happen so they took half of that too. And because people in East Berlin kept trying to sneak over to the side with all the good music, the communists built a big ass wall down the middle of the city and if you tried to get over it they would kill you. A perfect arrangement that no matter how many times I have it explained to me never makes any goddamn sense. History is very stupid. So imagine living in half a city 
literally surrounded on all sides by a hostile foreign country, that's the flashpoint of tension between nuclear superpowers. It was a very surreal place. Which is probably why Divided Berlin was always a really hip place for music and culture. Bowie made some of his best albums there, Iggy Pop, Nick Cave, and when New Wave got big, Germany was a big part of that. I mean, they basically invented this whole synth pop thing, right? And so that led to a particular subgenre of German New Wave called the Neue Deutsche Welle, which means German New Wave. And for a brief period in the early 80s, this stuff was actually really cool to the rest of the world and even crossing over to America. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Anyway, back to Nena. Nena and her boyfriend Rolf started a new band which they named after her, which I think is always kind of a risky move, naming the band after the singer. That's just begging her to go solo. They had their first hit in 1982 called Nur Getraunt, which I think means only dreaming. It is very 1982, with all the cool blippy bloopy synth stuff. 82, 83, that's like a really good time for New Wave because they figured out how to go pop, but the sounds are all still kind of primitive, so it hasn't gotten overly slick yet. Honestly, I like this a lot. And it was just the first of many top 10 hits they would have in Germany over the next couple years, all of which kinda kick ass. They talk about how they were kind of straddling the line between the underground and the pot scene. The way they're described, they kind of sound like the blondie of West Berlin. But again, we've gotten ahead of ourselves. We need to roll back to their second single. It started in 1982 when Berlin was host to a Rolling Stones concert. And during that tour, the Stones liked to kick off the show by setting off a whole bunch of balloons. Lead guitarist Carlo Cargas was at that concert. He saw those balloons taking off and start flying away into the heavily patrolled German airspace over the border. And he got this horrible thought, like, what if? So there's this German movie called Christiana F. Allegedly it's very good, it's a pretty big deal, David Bowie's in it. As legend has it, the real Christiana F. was in L.A. promoting this movie based on her life. A radio DJ asked what she was listening to these days. She pulled out a mixtape and played a song from her homeland called 99 Luftballons. At least that's what Christiana claims now. And Nana says that too, and the DJ says that. I am skeptical because I'm not sure the timeline adds up. But definitely, someone from Germany was at K-Rock and played them this song and K-Rock started playing it non-stop until it was a hit all over the country. You and I in a little toy shop. Now, I was always more familiar with the English version, but I hear both played nowadays. Now, if you don't know the story in the song, here's what happens. Buy a bag of balloons with the money we've got Set them free at the break of dawn Nana and Presumably her boyfriend are being cute, just playing around, setting off balloons. And to be fair to what happens later, 99 balloons is just way too many balloons. Like, what are you, like a car dealership? A house from up? What are you doing? Anyway, they let the balloons fly off. And meanwhile, at a nearby military base, a computer sensor glitches. Back at base, box in the software, flash the message, something's out there and misidentifies this bunch of balloons as some kind of threat. I'm not clear on this, but they might mistake it for aliens, actually. In any case, the base sees this unidentified flying clump of objects, and they rain down missiles and just lay waste to everything. This is what we've waited for. And the song ends with Nana crawling through the wreckage of the city. It's all over and I'm standing pretty in this dust that was the city. It's, it's sort of like a, a Dr. Strangelove type satire of nuclear paranoia. Like they don't even specify whether this is them or us doing the bombing. 
and they don't play it like it's funny, but it is kind of like a sick joke. A kid's toy causing the apocalypse. It's a ridiculous, farcical scenario. So ridiculous, in fact, that naturally in real life it nearly happened several times. History, still very stupid. So you can see how a song like this would resonate at that time period. It's 1983, the year of Reagan's evil empire speech where he basically implied that we should just flash fry the Soviets already. The year of a TV movie called The Day After about life after a nuclear strike. That was the year of War Games, another piece of media about a malfunctioning computer causing the end of the world. But I'm actually kind of curious how many people made that connection. I mean, it was the German version that caught on this country, and we Americans are very lazy. We're not gonna go around translating music, right? The English version didn't come out till later. And believe it or not, Nana and all her bandmates say that they've never really liked that version. Part of it is she seems a little uncomfortable with the language. The difficult, uh, difficulty? Mm -hmm. difficulty is... Might be embarrassed about how she keeps putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. But also the story is a lot different in English. The band didn't translate it themselves and they all seem to think that that version is kind of dumb. The original version is a little more subtle and poetic, believe it or not. Now, in both versions, some balloons float off into the air and they show up as an anomaly on the radar. Although in the original German, Nana's not involved, she's just the narrator, so she didn't cause Doomsday this time. And in this version, instead of carpet bombing the world, the military just scrambles some jets and shoots the balloons down. And if I'm interpreting this correctly, it sounds like they see it and they're like, oh, it's just a bunch of balloons. And then they shoot it down anyway, because fuck yeah! Target locked. I mean, like the song says, everyone's a Captain Kirk. What would Captain Kirk do? He'd blow that shit up. Fire! But when they shoot down the balloons, over the border, the other side sees this, they don't know what's happening, they interpret it as an act of aggression, and they start shooting back. Neun und Neunzig ministers of war who think they're so smart, they amp things up even further, and what follows is a Neun und Neunzig year war. The band never liked how the translation made more directly about current events. The original sounds more like World War I than the Cold War, honestly. It's, it's a story of the butterfly effect, small actions escalating and snowballing into horrible consequences, which I guess is a little less silly than the version where a general sees a blip on his screen and immediately slams his hand on the button. Watch the missile now! Now, I mean, I like both versions, and arguably the story doesn't really matter that much. Like, this was a hit in so many countries, many that didn't speak English or German. I, I kind of wonder how many Americans knew what the song was about, because it doesn't necessarily sound like the end of the world as we know it. The song was a hit first and foremost not because it tapped into the terror of mutually assured destruction, it's because it's a goddamn jam. Like, I love how it transitions from the slow build to that funky bounce, <laughs> and then that shift into the hard driving verses and chorus. And unlike a lot of 80s apocalyptic pop, there's no irony here at all. Nana is a pretty guileless singer. Fitting that this is about a kid's toy because there's an innocence to it. It's not a smug hipster song at all. The bouncy fun beat doesn't even feel like a counterpoint to the bleak subject matter. If anything, it gets you pumped. You listen to this and you totally understand why the pilots were firing rockets for no reason. It is a very sincere and powerful, mythical, cautionary tale. That also happens to be one of the catchiest songs of the 80s. Like, if this hadn't become an international hit, then what were we even doing? This had to be a smash. And it was. Number one across Europe, Australia, Canada, hit the charts in South Africa, Japan. God, boy, I wonder why this resonated in Japan. Nana was now a worldwide star. She even starred in a movie that year. Gib Gas, Ich will Spaß. That's a great title, by the way. And then, the balloon popped.
It's all over and I'm standing pretty. Where do you go from here? How do you follow a song where you've wiped out humanity? Wait a minute, I recognize this. Just a dream. That's their first song, but in English. In 1984, with the success of 99 Luft Balloons slash Red Balloons, their record label got them to release a whole album that was basically just all their previous hits translated into English. Today I'm coming, today I'm leaving too. Nana said she and the rest of the band were not really into this, this was the label's idea. Anyway, just a dream, almost, but did not crack the Hot 100. I think it should have been a hit, but it wasn't. Why? The answer is... I don't know, sometimes things just don't become hits. If I had to speculate, uh, one, the song is two years old by that point. A lot changes in two years. The big pop stars of MTV were starting to push out the new wave acts. Even the new wave acts that were still around were a lot slicker than this. It also might have been just lack of promotion. It's hard to promote a foreign band. They never toured in America or did any TV dates. In the UK, Nana got a lot of shit for not shaving her armpits, which is, you know, what they do in Europe. She seemed a little stung by that. Like seriously, all the UK sites I consulted were like, yeah, you remember the girl with the armpits? But mostly, like so many of these episodes, the answer might just be that it wasn't 99 Red Balloons, lightning in a bottle. And honestly, I don't think they really cared that much. They did put out an English version of their next album, but when that flopped, they stopped. It seems to me like they were pretty happy being big in their home country. But things started falling apart at home pretty quickly, too. By this point, Nana was used to going at least top five in Germany with every single. Their third album's lead single, Irgendwie Irgendwo Irgendwann, did hit the top five. And then their second single only went top 10, and then their next ones just didn't chart at all. And after that, they would just never have a hit again. It sounds like the appetite for German New Wave as a whole just ran out. And when their next album flopped, the band broke up for good. Nana tried for a solo career in the 90s, but it seems like she was more focused on raising her kids, so she basically saw nothing from it. And by the turn of the millennium, she was doing voice work for German kids' movies. Having to do the voice for German Quest for Camelot. The indignity. Okay, so here's a fascinating thing. After 15 years of trying for a comeback, it actually happened. In 2002, she released Nana featuring Nana, an album of updated versions of her old hits, and she got three top 10 hits out of it in Germany. The biggest comeback of an 80s pop diva since Kylie Minogue. Now here she is doing again as a duet with fellow 80s refugee Kim Wilde. And when she released an album of new material in 2005, she got a number one single out of it. It's called Liebe ist. That means love is. See, I haven't forgotten all my German. Yeah, I don't know anything about this, but this is so 2005. My mind is probably playing tricks on me, but I swear I must have seen this on VH1 in the mid-2000s next to KT Tunstall and Natasha Bedingfield videos. Now, I'm not going to pretend I know what happens over there, but just glancing through her chart stats, she seems like she was a recurring presence on the German charts even up through 2016. And since then, she's been a judge on The Voice of Germany. She still tours. And in the last couple years, she seems to have gone a little crazy. But since I'm not German and I don't necessarily have context or know what's reliable information, I'm just gonna pretend I didn't read any of that. Regardless of how many hits she's had, everyone agrees that 99 Luftballons is still her signature song. There are many versions of it in French, Spanish, probably many other languages. It's still awesome. Can't beat it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I really cannot recommend those first three albums enough. Check those out on your own time. Those songs should all have been hits, and it's a shame that no one in the 80s was listening to foreign music. 
But 99 Luft Balloons was so awesome that it broke through even our American disdain for foreign pop, and we didn't even need subtitles. Even this many years after the Cold War, it still hits. Hopefully we learned a little something from it, and we do not accidentally kill each other. But who knows, you in the future might be watching this video from a nuclear bunker. I'm glad you still have internet. Let me know what cool mutations you have now in the comments. Conditioned lesson, fliegen.